a year ago, I was sitting on my sofa, and I just picked my daughter up from high school. And breaking news came out that Stone, maybe Marjorie Stone and Douglas shooting, was, it was an active shooter. Now, I called my daughter out because that's minutes from us. That's 20 minutes from our school or our home. And I wanted to see what her reaction was. And I wanted to share that moment with her just so she understood. When I called her out of the bedroom, she stood, and she stood in front of the, the television, and my daughter, my daughter has big, beautiful eyes, but her eyes grew twice in size. She, they grew in size, and I saw the, a face of dismay. Then I heard the words, that would be forever embedded in my head. She uttered the words, how will I ever feel safe in school again? Now as parents, I'm sure you understand that if you hear a teenager actually cry out loud, which because they, they know everything, right? Our teenagers know everything, you try to tell them something, oh, I know, I know, I know. But when they actually say something, and you hear this, it has to register. When I heard those words, how will I ever feel safe in school? It was a call to action. At that point, I had a vision, a vision that came up from, above, from heaven up above, and it told me I needed to protect my daughter. At that point, I vowed to put my daughter's safety back into my own hands because I'm a parent. I can't sit and wait for elected officials to do something about this. I can't wait for the school to put protocols in place to protect her personally. That vision was a common action, and it made me, it, it gave me a focus as to how to protect my daughter. My thought was, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a designer, how do I do this? Well, you know, you cannot, you might not be all those things, but if you're a parent, you're going to find a way to get it done. So that day, actually that day, I didn't tell you this, but that was my birthday. My birthday's you know, on Valentine's Day. And I spent my birthday drawing a pattern. That's my daughter, by the way. Drawing a pattern that of a garment that may be able to protect. Her. And I thought about it and I said, I want to give her something that's light and durable. I want to give her something that has bulletproof protection in front to back. I want to give her something that has the ability to be accessed at any time within the confines of the school. Because the worst thing that you can have, right, is to be on the other side of the lockdown and your child there and feeling helpless and not knowing if she's okay. Thinking maybe she's on under a desk or against the wall. Well, I wanted to make sure that she can access this at any time. I want to make sure it was detachable so she's not carrying books with her, trying to get away. I also designed something that was in the backpack that when you put a, a pack or a plate in the backpack, you can use it as a face card. So, what I did was I, 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 I went and I asked her for her help because, yes, I can draw, but I can't sew. Okay? And I asked her, hey, can you help me do this? Well, my daughter, she says, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to make something for you. And she said, okay, no problem. So we went and I got, I went up in the attic and I got a sewing machine and she helped me for an hour and a half. We sold pillows. We had daughter, father and daughter time for an hour and a half. And that was great, because I don't know, I'm, I'm old school, I do the, you know, I do the stitch this way, but she does the sewing machine. So she went back to her room an hour later, came back, and knocked on her door, baby girl. She says, yes. I said, look what I made. She looked, and she said, I don't know what that is. And I said, well, it's a mess, you know, it's, you know. She said, that's not a mess, I'm not wearing And I said, okay, no problem, I understand. Something I probably wouldn't wear in Halloween, but, what I didn't know is that I was able to do something that I envisioned that may help her. And I said, you know what, I mean, I'm, my focus is to do more than that. 
is to go further and see if I can perfect this. And I did. A couple months later, I came back and I knocked on the door. Hey, girl. She said, yes. I said, look what I have. Well, she opened up the door, she looked at it, and she went, wow, you did this. And I said, yes. She looked at me and said, as any teenager, you know teenagers, any teacher that throws something from left field, she looked at me and said, well, what about our friends? And that threw me for a loop because I didn't even think about that. So this campaign became more than just protecting my daughter. It became more than just putting my daughter's safety back into my hands. It became a campaign to help others. That selfless act that she had was to tell me there's other people out there because if I put this on, if my daughter puts this on and her friends see her, how are they going to feel? Now, these, these products, you can go out and you can get go through products and they're out there and they cost money, they cost a lot, right? And you have some that are less fortunate, you have less, some that are less privileged, and they can't afford this. So what happens when you see someone who can't afford this kind of product, put it on, and the child that sits next to them sees this and they can't, and they go to their parents and say, what? Johnny had this on, what do I do? How come you didn't get me this? So I have a whole other drive and mission on this to get this for everyone that's available. 